first and foremost, the whole issue of good luck, good luck charms, wearing something that is blessed or holy, or doing something that you think will bring about some good or save you from evil. Obviously, any Muslim who understands La ilaha illallah will understand that only Allah has the power to help and only Allah has the power to protect. That's the whole point of La ilaha illallah. That's the whole point of La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Nothing can change and there is no power except by the will of Allah. So, to ascribe such power to other than Allah is to ascribe another God besides Allah. Since Allah is the one who decrees, when you say that I have a good luck charm, I have a good luck tree, I have a special ring that I wear, I have a gemstone that will protect me, you are ascribing to another entity the power to help or preserve or cure or give you good luck or protect you from bad luck. And obviously only our Creator has that power. So, in our religion, we don't believe in any such thing as superstitious, you know, rituals or, or you know, paganistic uh, customs or whatnot. You know, the, the issue of like, what, what is it, Friday the 13th or black cats crossing or uh, knocking on wood or upside down horseshoes or whatever it might be. We don't believe in any of this stuff, right? And of course, I'm mentioning Western examples. Unfortunately, Muslims also have their examples, right? The Taviz that has weird symbols and whatnot on it. How about this? This is the Pakistani thing, you wouldn't know what this is. So the, the, the five fingers, right? And sometimes you find it, Muhammad Ali Hassan Hussein Fatima as well, oh, yeah. written on it, right? That's what five, holy bodies. five holy bodies, right? So you find this in some Sufi and some Shia groups, like this is a good luck charm. You enter somebody's house and you see the, the five fingers, right? Uh, and Barilvis, yes. Uh, and then the other, uh, the other group, uh, or the other thing that is very common in Muslim cultures is the turquoise eye. So the turquoise eye, which is, it's meant to protect you from al-ayn, from hasad, from the evil eye, right? You find it in many households here and there. Now people actually believe that that thing hanging on the wall will protect them from the evil eye, right? And for us, this superstition is not just funny, it is a type of paganism. Because this is in essence an idol. If you think about it, right? What is the purpose of hanging that structure that you think will protect you, you think will save you. You are giving your hope, your servitude, your allegiance, your tawakkul uh, basically, right? This is literally what tawakkul is. That your tawakkul becomes in that. And therefore, if something happens to that icon, what happens? You get worried. It's a bad omen, a bad omen now, right? Who's gonna protect us now? You see? And therefore, this hadith clearly demonstrates evil omens and superstitions is no joke. It's a type of shirk. And how does this show us this? By many ways, I mean, the point being that the Prophet wasallam compared Abu Waqid's request with the request to make an idol. Even though, did Abu Waqid ask for an idol? No. Abu Waqid said, I want a good luck tree. And the Prophet swore by Allah. Wallah, walladhi nafsi biyadi, he said, I swear by the one who has my hope, my life. I swear by Allah, you have said exactly like the children of Israel said. But is it exactly like he said in terms of words? No, but he swore it's exactly like. Why? Because the essence or the meaning is exactly the same. You understand this point? The words are different, clearly. Abu Waqid is saying, I want a good luck tree. And the Bani Israel said that, the children of Israel said, we want an idol. They literally said, we want an idol like they have an idol. And the Prophet swore it's the same, even though the words are not the same, but the essence or the content is the same. Because what is a God other than the one you turn to for help and protection? What is a God other than the one you ask when you are in need? So now if you have uh, uh, another icon, you have another being, you have another thing that you feel will help you, will protect you, therefore this becomes in essence an idol other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we've mentioned all of this, I have to put the footnote here that uh, the Qur'an cannot be equated with a taviz. The Qur'an cannot be equated with this because the Qur'an for us is the uncreated speech of Allah.
It is the uncreated kalam of Allah. It is an attribute of Allah. It is a sifa of Allah. The Quran is not separate from Allah. The Quran is not a separate entity. We can seek protection through the Quran because the Quran is an attribute of Allah. And so when we are fearful, when we are scared, we recite the Quran. And we expect the Quran to benefit us in this regard, right? When we are in trouble, we recite the Quran. And therefore from this, to have a physical copy of the Quran or a physical verse of the Quran somewhere, it can never be shirk. But some scholars have said it is not befitting the dignity of the Quran to be used as a talisman and amulet physically. It should be used verbally. You see the difference? It can never be haram or shirk. But what is the issue? The issue is, is it showing respect to the Quran? If you, now very common, many of us, we have the Quran in the glove compartment of our cars, right? Now, it's not, it cannot be shirk. Because the Quran is not a separate entity, it is an attribute of Allah. But is it dignified to just throw the Quran into the glove compartment with some spare pencils and with loose change and with your you know copy of your you know insurance card? Is it is this dignified? It's not something that is the Quran is kept in a noble place. The Quran is Kitabun Karim. It's a noble book, right? Kitabun Aziz. Allah says that the Kitabun Aziz. So some scholars have said. لا يليق, it's not befitting the dignity of the Qur'an to be treated in this regard. And others have said, well, if it is done properly with the right niyyah, then this is halal. So the controversy is over, is it showing respect to the Qur'an or not? It's not over, is it halal or haram? Clear. I'm going to be very clear here. So the same goes wearing the Qur'anic necklace, right? <coughs> wearing a Qur'anic taviz, right? Somebody writes ayatul kursi and then folds it up into a minuscule thing, and then he puts it in a little pouch, right? Hangs it around his neck, okay? Or some of our sisters have, mashallah, gold chains with Ayatul Kursi dangling from their neck, right? Now, the question is not whether it is haram or halal or shirk or kufr. No, it's not. But now, is it befitting? You have the Quran dangling from your neck. What are you going to do when you have to go to the restroom? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when you are committing sins and you have this dangling around your neck? Right? Is this befitting? No doubt committing sins is not good anyway, but committing sins with the Quran dangling on your neck is obviously much worse, isn't it? Right? What are you going to do if, yani, you know, relations with your spouse, what are you going to do? So, the question is therefore not haram or halal, the question is, is it showing dignity to the Quran? And in my humble opinion, we should not use the Quran as a physical talisman because of this. But if somebody wants to, and it's not his decision to do so, but at least we should remind him that this is not, uh, you know, just be careful. Because the Quran, we treat it holy. We know this. We treat the book in a holy manner. And we put it high on the shelf, and we have wudu and we touch it, and we always show respect to it because it is the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nonetheless, if somebody has ayatul kursi dangling from the rear view mirror, don't just snatch it away and say, la hawla wa la quwwata la billah. No, calm down. It's all right. He has, maybe he'll say, I want to memorize ayatul kursi so I have it there every time I start the car, which is actually a very good excuse out, right? I want to memorize Ayatul Kursi, so I'm having it dangling for the while, and then I'll take it off after I memorize it. But point being, this hadith has nothing to do with the Quran. This hadith has to do with other types of talismans and good luck and whatnot of this nature. What about putting it on the wall? So the same thing applies. If you put it on the wall for baraka, no, so this is not baraka. This is for decoration then, right? So this is another issue. But the issue is if you put it on the, on the wall for barakah, for, for baraka, we say the same thing, that it's not necessarily wrong. You know, as long as you are showing respect and whatnot to it.